This episode went really, really smoothly. Probably one of the smoothest that we've had in the history of Shaking Through. I think everything went so well because of the people that were involved in this one, and it was just really easy to capture. The first thing that came to mind for us was just that this was gonna be an awesome meeting of two different worlds. I think we gave ourselves two or three hours for those guys to learn the song and to acclimate to one another and about 45 minutes into it, they were already ready. I, I think that's awesome. Very good. It's a good arrangement, I think. Very good. Yeah. Do you guys want to take a couple minutes yeah. and like we'll get set up to record it? Sure. You guys are good, man. From the beginning of the day, when we had everyone just kind of just jamming the tune out, Chris was playing his awesome CNC drum set, and that was mic'd up with, on the kick drum, a D112. On the snare was the Telefunken M81. On the overheads, we used a pair of Telefunken Elam 260 in conjunction with a Coles 4038, kind of as a really beefy mono overhead. On the room mic, I used a, a single fat head ribbon mic and had it turn 90 degrees so that the null was facing the drum set. And then for bass, Dave played his P bass that ran through his Sans amp that fed our matchless Thunderman 15-inch flip-top combo. And I incorporated a little bit of that in the mix with the other signals, which was uh, U67, and then this microphone that I built out of a speaker. And what that does is pick up mainly super low frequencies. Right after the basic track, Dave had a really awesome idea. He basically doubled and accentuated parts of his bass line with the Eastwood baritone guitar. Do you, think, do you like the palm mute? Let Four. me hear it. Four. It was awesome. And it's a big part of the choruses in this song. Definitely mute it, yeah. Okay, man. <laughs> That's good. Steven came in just really excited to work with us. I thought it was fun because his desire to do a lot vocally was really high up there with, with my own. So the first one should go down. I think when it goes up high like that, it's too resolved. Well, now I'm going away. Yeah. Okay. First time, and then. No one will worry. Yeah. yeah. On Steven's vocal, we had him sing into the. Neumann U67. That ran into the DW Fern VT2 into the Massive Passive and LA2A. It's too high. If it's too high... Um... I can get it. Okay, you can get it. I can get it. Right. Everything in that chain really accentuated how huge and smooth Steven's vocals are. You know, that's really the showcase of everything. If you notice, there's no guitars in this song. And so what that means is you've just got this enormous amount of space left for Steven's voice. And we learned that through Strand of Oaks. We learned that for Dreamers of the Ghetto. Our biggest comments are about how huge the voice is. Well, that's because we left a ton of space for it. Until I'm licking, these bounty on my head. That's right, I'm up today. She can't forget what it did to her. One day she's gonna hunt me. We also knew we had a huge amount of space for something other than dudes. So we really wanted female vocals. We had Felicia and Becca from Ava Luna come down from Brooklyn, and they pulled out some killer, killer background vocals really, really quickly. Hey, Becca, can you take like a split step forward? Story of my yeah, life. <laughs> Initially, our idea was to have them sing together, but it was a little bit hard to get the balance correctly. I don't know, I meant forward. Forward? Yeah, yeah. Not the story of my life. No, I was gonna say. So we ended up 
having both of them sing individually into the U67. We didn't have a lot of time with those guys. You know, by the time we got to them, they had maybe less than an hour before they had to, to get back on the bus. So we had to sort of rip through it quick, you know? And they were absolutely game and absolutely awesome. Robbie's keyboards are one of the last things that we tracked on this song, and he started with our Mason and Hamlin upright piano. I used the Telefunk and Elam 260s, and then when it came time for Robbie to lay down his synths, he came back out in the live room, took two passes. The first one was a, a string pad kind of thing, and then the second one was the more synthy, more kind of bubbly pad that went through the entire song. It is awesome to bring together people that typically wouldn't meet up in the music world and especially in an environment where they can all play to their strengths. And that's, that's what they did. The takeaway is you bring together a bunch of players from Man Man and the War on Drugs and you put them together with an incredible R&B singer. And if everybody's in the right headspace, if, if everybody's got the right attitude, it's going to be just as incredible as anything they've done before, and maybe even more so. Oh, no,